Welcome to our country roads video. Perfect if you are getting ready for your driving test and you are concerned you are going to get a country road route, but also packed with information for even the most professional driver to stop and think, I didn't know that. But what if I've never driven a car before? That is exactly why we're here, my friend. Let's get stuck in. All right, folks, let's dive in. Rural driving is not just like city driving, but with cows. There are loads of unique challenges and hazards that you will see on country roads that you just don't get when you're driving around in town. And the beauty of it is it could be different every single time. It could be a cow, it could be a sheep, it could be a cyclist, a tractor, who knows? And today we are here to conquer them together. Let's go. Yeah, but aren't all roads the same? That is a very good question and no, they are not. You will see road signs on rural roads and country roads that you will not see anywhere else in the country. If weather conditions change drastically, that's gonna change your road positioning and how you drive down that road completely. And that's what we're going to learn together now. If you're tired spending hundreds of hours learning to drive, let me do the hard work for you. Use my background as a teacher and a driving instructor, I've created this course all for the price of one driving lesson. Have yourselves a look when you get a second in the comments below. Now you see that sign? That sign there is a national speed limit sign. If you're on a country road or a single carriageway road, that means the speed limit in the UK is 60 miles per hour. So basically I should always drive 60 miles an hour. No, it's definitely a maximum limit, not the recommended speed. Bends on country roads can be as tricky as a Rubik's Cube. They are probably one of the most challenging parts of driving on country roads. But here is the secret. It's all about the limiting point. But how can I judge the speed just by looking at the bend? Well, that's a very good question. The limiting point is the furthest point you can possibly see down that road. As you enter a bend, if the limiting point starts to get further away down the road, this means you're good to speed up a bit. But if you're approaching a bend and the limiting point is starting to get closer to you, this means you need to seriously start thinking about slowing down. And if there's a sheep in the road, slow down too. It is a skill that you will develop with time and practice and lots and lots of patience. As I love to say, God did not give us cars, we were given legs. So trying to learn to practice to drive takes a lot of time. The main thing you need to remember, if in doubt, on a country road, slow down. One of the main things I see tripping people up on their driving test when driving on country roads is when they don't know what the speed limit is. And the trick is to look out for street lights. And no, street lights on country roads are not just for making it look like a UFO movie. When you see street lights, chances are that is going to be a 30 mile per hour zone. But, and here's the key, most country roads won't have street lights. And that, my friends, is the sign that it's the national speed limit. If you can remember those two golden rules, street lights equals 30, no street lights equals national speed limit, you are going to be halfway there. Now, don't get me wrong, there are the exceptions. And if it is anywhere in between 30 and national speed limit, there will be lots of repeater signs, but we're not gonna go more into that now. If you've learned anything so far, this video would have taken me at least 10 hours. So get that like button pressed to show your love and I'll make some more. The problem is, of course, if you have no street lights on the rural road, when it's pitch black nighttime, which in the UK is approximately half the year, it makes it a lot harder to drive. And this is when you have to start using your full beams or your main beams. No, you can't keep those on all the time. The problem with your main beams are they're going to blind anyone else that's coming at you. They're called main beams or full beams because they're a lot higher up on the road, allowing you to see further down the road. The problem with this is they shine straight into the oncoming car's eyes, meaning they can't see a thing. And that's what we call getting dazzled. And it's not fun. So by all means, use your full beams. It's going to be the left stick on your steering wheel. If you pull it or push it towards you or away from you, that will make your full beams come on. But if there is an oncoming car, you must make sure you turn them off very quickly. Most modern cars are now automatic, but chances are if you're just learning to drive, yours might not be, so keep that in mind. Now rural roads have an absolute array of signs, and we could be here all day if I go through every single one. You've got sharp bend signs, slow road marking signs, stop signs, be aware of alien signs. Okay, I just made that last one up. But hey, it is crucial we respect these signs because everyone else is expecting us to, so if we don't, that's when the problems begin. But what if I don't understand all the signs? Yes, that is a problem. 
Luckily, that's where I come in. Just remember, if you don't understand a sign, make sure you try and look it up when you get home, check the highway code, or ask a friend. Yeah, hey Bobby, um, I'm just trying to figure out what this sign means. Can you, uh, can you help? Well, let's have a look at some examples of some real world situations of how we should be driving on country roads, especially for our driving test. So the first bend we can see here, and this is our limiting point getting far closer to us. So as it's getting closer, I'm slowing down more and more. You've got the sharp bend sign as well. As we come out the bend, limiting point, far away, meaning I can speed up. So I'm speeding up to 40 miles per hour now. I'm continuing to speed up. Your limiting point is the furthest possible thing you can see down the road. So in this case, it's the hedge on the right hand side. And again, we're still nice and open here. I could speed up more, but there's a car in front of me and I need to keep that distance from the car in case he brakes hard and I need to brake hard as well. And because it's a country road, it might not be very well used. So I think it's gonna have lots of gravel on, lots of debris. If I need to slow down fast, I could slide. A lot higher chance of sliding. So I need to keep that in mind. Oh, look at that, we've got a deer sign. Are we gonna see a deer for today? I have never seen a deer on this road ever. But that's not to say you won't, and I have seen them in the past in other areas. If you see a sign like this, it's just good to be aware. You don't have to go crazy, you don't have to go super slow. Uh, just anything like this with wildlife, just be more aware, because if you do have a deer cross the road or something in the road, you're going to seriously need to adjust your speed. Again, can't see around the hedge, but it does seem to continue on. There you go. Look at that big open road ahead. So this isn't a one size fits all, but if the conditions are correct and it's a nice open road like this with a far away limiting point, the examiner is going to expect you to get up to around 50 miles per hour or above. And this is getting windy. So the windier it gets, the slower you go. The golden rule with rural roads is prepare for the worst. Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And if we look at this bend here, it's going really, really sharp. If you ever see a cow sign like this, it's just worth being aware there could very well be cows crossing the road just around the corner. And if you're on your driving test, that's gonna be a bit of a shock if you're going 40 odd miles an hour, just something to keep in mind. And then you've got another strange sign here, cattle crossing, what's that? Sometimes you'll be on your driving test round here and there will be cows crossing the road right here. This bend here is absolutely deadly. As you can see, you've got a barrier, so that says something, you've got a sign. And what you need to think of is if a lorry or someone is coming around that corner at the same time as you, it's gonna be tight, tight like a tiger. So you need to come off that gas, especially if it's wet. In the winter time, there's all leaves around the edge of the road, there's mud, which means if you try and slow down quickly around the bend, it's gonna to be too late and your car's gonna carry on sliding. It's not gonna be fun. This is the only place I've ever seen this sign. As you're going to see in a second, the limiting point on this one is extremely close. And when it gets this close, it means you need to go extremely slow. Uh, the signs also show whether you've got a slow sign on the road, you've got a triangle sign uh, to show it's a 90 degree turn, and you've got the chevrons on the edge there as well. All, everything screams, slow down. You need to go around this corner here at 10 miles an hour. If you see a sign like that, it's saying that is a sharp bend. And if you want to stay on your side of the road, it's 10 miles an hour. Again, we've got some signs here. We've got a giveaway sign, 100 meters, 100 yards, sorry. Remember, this is still national speed limit here and I'm doing 18 miles an hour comfortably. This is a really important junction here because as you can see, the first one is the 40 mile per hour sign and then you've got a stop sign and you've got to notice both of those. Massive fail zone. First of all, the 40 miles per hour is a bit of a shock. You pull out this junction and you don't realize that you need to get up to speed quickly. And then after that, you've got a stop sign as well. And people often fail there, especially with it being on a hill, they try and creep and peep and it looks clear, so they go. Unfortunately, it's a stop sign, so legally you have to stop. Now I've seen multiple people fail on this national speed limit road because they've just come off that other road, which is nice and slow. And then they got on here, and they, they try and do 40 miles per hour all the way because they're a bit panicky. Um, there's a few bends, but we have this is why we have to use our limiting point. Because as you can see here, this is nice open road. Um, it's nice and wide, plenty wide enough for that lorry and for me. That's when it's really important to use that limiting point. Because as we get closer, we can ease off, but then we can see it's open back up. So we put a foot down again, stay at that 50 or above mark unless weather conditions say otherwise. Sometimes on rural roads, you're gonna come across these big bends in the road and they're more like gentle curves rather than actual bends, which means it's okay to just sometimes come off the gas instead of starting to press that brake. And the easiest way to tell if it's a gentle curve or a sharp bend, of course, is by checking the limiting point. 
if you look at the distance, you've got three signs there, plus your limiting point. More paint, more signs, more danger. That means probably some accidents happened here at some point. As you can see, this road's nice and open. The bends are nice and gentle. On your driving test, you would be expected to go 50 miles per hour or above throughout most of it. You'll be fine slowing down more for the bends. Uh, but if you try going 40 miles an hour all the way, you probably fail from repeated faults. I've seen it a few times. So I am touching the brake a bit before the corner. We always brake before the corner, maintain around the corner and accelerate out the corner. Otherwise you do what my daughter did the other day and you spin the car 180 degrees in the middle of the road. Not a good day, but a learning curve. We've all been there. Hopefully not. You're unlikely to get a road like this on your driving test just because it is quite challenging. For a start, we have no lines on the road. We have no curb. Uh, the road's very narrow. There are laybys to pull into. So this is how we have to adjust. We can't see a thing. And this is what I mean about preparing for the worst. I'm mentally preparing for a car to be around that corner, um, knowing I've got to stay on my side of the road and my foot's ready to touch that brake. The focus is immense. When you're on the straight bit, you don't need to try and rub against the hedge, okay? You can come out slightly. When there's a bend, yes, I am gonna try and get as close as I can to the edge. Um, but if I'm not, if there's not a bend like now, I can come slightly away and speed up a bit. Um, as long as I approach the bends, staying on my side nice and tight. Okay, we've opened back up. There is a car coming. So now I'm adjusting for the laybys. You see, there's a slightly wider bit here. So I'm just slightly, you see, he's actually pulled in for me. What a hero. But yeah, you're just adjusting for the laybys. You don't have to stop, you don't have to panic. You're just looking down the road constantly, lay by there, and you're just looking for those laybys, thinking, right, if there's a car there, where am I gonna go? Where are they gonna go? And you can't always just think, right, they're gonna pull in there and I'm just gonna go. And then you can imagine if it was pitch black, slightly easier sometimes in the dark on country roads, because at least you've got the lights to give you a clue if someone's around the corner. But if it's wet or snowy or any conditions like that, it can become very treacherous. And that's when you have to really, really think about slowing down even more than the 20 miles an hour, which I'm still doing. Right, it's opening back up. So I am back to 30 miles per hour now. Oh, shiza. Sneaky pothole got me. I promise it wasn't a sheep. But what happens if I get stuck behind a tractor? Or worse, a cyclist? These are both really good questions and I have seen them happen on the driving test before. No perfect answer for what to do. It really depends on the road you're on. I have seen someone on the driving test follow a cyclist for approximately 10 minutes down that road and they pass a test. Why? Because there was no point that it was safe to overtake the cyclist because the road was constantly zigzagging round bends left and right. But if you were on a completely straight section of road and it was safe to overtake, then feel free, go ahead. If it's a tractor, providing they're going around 30 miles an hour or more, it's probably going to be quite difficult to overtake the tractor. One, because they're so big. Two, because they can get up to reasonable speed. And three, you're not going to be able to see around them. So in most cases, I'd probably follow the tractor. But you have to make up your own mind with that. Ah, the joys of rural driving. Each challenge you come across on a country road is an opportunity to make you a better driver because you will then be able to use that information that you have learned and put it into different situations in the future. If this has helped, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Don't forget the bell because you don't want to miss out on what future road adventures we have. And what about if I want to learn more? That, my friend, is a brilliant question. I've had to cut this video down to about eight minutes to keep it interesting, but if you want to know every single detail about country road driving and everything else about your driving test and how to drive, check out my online driving course in the description below, all for the price of one driving lesson. Let me know in the comments what you've learned about country roads. And yes, rural roads might seem intimidating at first, like when you first try and assemble a flat pack wardrobe. Ugh. But by practicing and following what I've shown you, you will be as comfortable on these roads as you are in your favorite pajamas. Because driving isn't just about getting from point A to point B, it's about doing it safely, responsibly, and hopefully without any alien encounters. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. Until next time, keep learning, keep driving, and keep safe. And my cheesy line of the day, on our online driving course, take a spin. Master driving, it's a sure win. As I love to say, God did not give us cards. Oh my God. <laughs>